Greetings guys and welcome to a special edition of Slant Alpha Adventures. We're doing today a full flight tutorial in the working title mod for the Citation CJ4 here in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. We attempted this on stream last night and it went really well and the uh, plane performed pretty admirably but it was a little bit hectic with the stream chat. It was a very well attended stream and the stream chat was a little bit distracting but we also had some you know, kind of curveballs thrown at us from air traffic control on the VATSIM network and it wound up being kind of a little bit more hectic and I got behind the plane at one point. Um, so it was a good demonstration of the plane's capabilities but I don't know how well it functioned as a tutorial and there were a few things that I forgot in the pre-flight setup as well uh, that I can't really blame on uh, the hecticness of the stream but uh, yeah, so we want to try this again today without being on the VATSIM network and without having the, uh, the Twitch stream connected so that uh, I can kind of focus on, you know, getting these details correct and showing you guys, you know, a pretty, pretty f uh, start to finish kind of procedure for flying this, uh, this plane. This is the working title, CJ4 version 0.8.1. It is a modification of the stock CJ4 for Flight Sim 2020. It is, does not add a separate plane into your hangar, but it makes the one that's in there uh, behave a lot more realistically. And finding this online real easy, um, if you just go uh, GitHub CJ4, uh, that takes you really right to it, that first kind of research return. Scroll down here, you can see that 0.8.1 is the current model, and um, here's the download for it right here, the zip file. Basically, you just un un uh, unpack that zip and put the, the resulting folder into your community folder in the, uh, you know, four flights in 2020, which I have a shortcut to on my desktop. And uh, then when you fire this thing up, you'll see that it is working. And we'll get, uh, we'll show you how, a quick way to verify that it is in fact uh, installed properly and working uh, here in just a moment. The uh, one thing that I do want to note is that today is December 22nd. As I record this video, there is a major update to uh, Microsoft Flight Sim due out from Asobo today, but it has not dropped yet as of the recording of this video. So we're hoping that when that does happen later today, it does not uh, adversely affect anything that works in this aircraft right now. Uh, so as of right now, we're flying it in a state that it was... Uh, equivalent to on December 21st of 2020, which was the same state that it was when I did this on stream. Uh, and again, that one on stream, it's worth a watch. You, it's, it's actually a very good uh, example of what kind of uh, chaos can happen when you get last minute changes from air traffic control. Uh, but this one hopefully will be a little bit more of a straightforward tutorial on how the plane operates. Um, just a few uh, issues to be aware of with the plane in its current state, and let's jump inside the aircraft. Uh, these autopilot functions up top here, if you have these mapped to uh, joystick buttons or keyboard buttons, you probably don't want to use those as of this version. So what happens is that the working title development group has um, really fleshed out this uh, flight management system for this aircraft, the ProLine 21. And these buttons, in order to make them work properly, there's a layer of code um, that comes with this mod of the aircraft that really does most of the autopilot functions and then sends the results of that code to the autopilot function within Flight Sim 2020. So there's kind of a layer of intermediary code that these buttons really activate rather than activating the, the air autopilot code in Asobo directly, which as we know, you know, a lot a lot of it doesn't always work as planned or 100% or correctly. So, um, so if you use a keyboard map to autopilot functions or a joystick button map to autopilot functions, you're kind of bypassing that layer of code and going right to the core simulator autopilot code, which, like I said, doesn't always work correctly. So you really want to use these buttons with mouse clicks um, to operate these functions for right now. Uh, also, if you have any custom liveries installed for the aircraft, you want to make sure you uninstall them um, to make sure. So, so a few of those custom liveries actually ship with panel files that do interfere with that uh, those autopilot functions. So if you have any weird behavior from the autopilot, you want to you know, uninstall those custom liveries and try it again without those, with just the default livery, before you get onto the working title Discord and complain about odd behavior. 
Uh, it might just be a result of the fact that your livery is uh, interfering with that custom autopilot coding. So, uh, so do be aware of that. Um, another thing is that the plane does support an automatic import of the flight plan from the world map flight planning page. Uh, and you can also go into Simbrief, and, uh, which is an online flight plan creation website, and you can automatically import a plan from Simbrief as well. Um, but we've heard reports on the working title Discord about some odd errors happening with the autopilot on some of those automatically imported plans as well. Uh, my method has always been to find or create a route on my own. There's a tutorial on this page, on this, uh, on this YouTube channel for doing so. And then I would manually enter the uh, route into the FMC on PowerUp, which is the method that we're going to be demonstrating in this video. Uh, and that tends to be a more reliable way of getting a flight plan into the, the computer without any kind of odd quirks or issues. Now, there is one thing with the final fix on the departure becoming the first fix on your en route. Uh, portion of your route that's uh there is a little bit of a bug there which we'll we'll show there's a real easy workaround for that and we'll demonstrate that when we get there as well now um one other known issue is that on the climb out vertical navigation uh vnav mode uh for climbs does occasionally have some uh some little quirks and bugs as well the the the, the way to fly this plane in the real world is typically to use uh, flight level change mode, FLC, right here, uh, on the climb out, and then you would use the VNAV mode here um, for the descents, if you have a profile descent with a lot of altitude restrictions along the way, like the one we'll be flying for you today. Um, so typically, FLC will get you on your climb, and you'd set the altitude constraints uh, with the altitude knob, and then VNAV on the way down will get you uh, past all the altitude constraints on your arrival. So that's, again, that's the kind of the recommended method. That's the way the plane is mostly flown in the real world, uh, according to the main developer of it, of the working title group, which he has hundreds of hours in the real thing, so he kind of knows. Um, but that's also the method that we're going to be demonstrating for you today. Uh, there are a couple of, you know, major limitations in the FMC um, that uh, aren't, yet working but the developers are working on and that is uh, that it does not have the ability to automatically fly a hold and it does not load in and uh, and have the ability to automatically fly a missed approach procedure as part of your approach so those are a couple of you know I wouldn't say they're, they're not deal breaking issues uh, because those are two things that you can fly using other modes of the autopilot rather than the uh, just you know the, the automatic uh, FMC you know leg tracking type thing you can use heading mode and altitude mode and, and that sort of thing and fly those things if you need to. Um, but uh, those are things that the real aircraft is able to do that this version is not yet able to do and those things are coming. Um, and I guess the last thing to say is that there is one kind of aerodynamic oddity with the plane. It, it tends to fly pretty well by the real numbers. Uh, but the one thing that uh, that it doesn't quite do well, uh, and this is more of a, of a problem with the aerodynamic modeling within Flight Sim 2020, not so much a problem with this particular mod or this particular plane, uh, but kind of just in general, uh, ground effect aerodynamics on this sim are kind of exaggerated. So once you're on approach and getting ready to touch down and you get to the point where you're right over the threshold, um, the, uh, there's a, there's a, the, the, the plane suddenly goes from acting perfectly like you're flying it right by the numbers. And you'll see, we'll fly it right by the V approach and the V ref um, speeds that are given by the FMC, and you'll see by this uh, this angle of attack meter that those numbers will give us, you know, pretty good performance as far as putting us in the right uh, descent uh, attitude and pitch attitude for arrival. Uh, but as soon as we get over the runway, you'll see that it's going to act like it's got a ton of extra energy. It's either going to float really, really long, or it's going to bounce, uh, or maybe both. So there's just a, a weirdness with the aerodynamic model with the ground effect that over exaggerates that effect and so we'll see that if that we'll see that happen on landing so so keep that in mind and don't judge me too harshly on the landing when it comes to uh suddenly finding ourselves with a lot of extra energy we'll probably roll it way long um you know for the t the, the type and size and weight of the aircraft this is uh, but we are landing at portland where we have uh you know almost ten thousand foot of runway to use so we uh we should have plenty of extra pavement uh, to to account for that this is the route that we're flying today, and it is, it is the same route that we flew last night. It turned out to be a really good example of uh, how the plane functions with, uh, you know, the descent 
the yeah of the ascent and descent profiles. So we're going to do it again without all the hecticness that we had last night. But we're flying from Reno Tahoe International to Portland International. We're going to fly the Mustang Eight um, departure, and we'll talk about that in more detail in just a moment. And uh, then it's the Timbers Two arrival, which has these three pages here. It's a very complicated long arrival with a lot of these. This is a beautiful um, example to use for this plane because when we're coming in from this point Moxie and you'll see we got uh, you know, different um, altitude constraints at each point on the way down and Timbers at 11 and then we go to the second page here you know, Timbers at 11 again Vance is between 15 and 11 Flower between 7 and 9 and then uh, last night we were on the two eights coming into Portland so we kind of took this branch out to Widmer and you'll see that the, the plane will hit all these altitude constraints on its own all the way down uh, with that vertical navigation mode, that VNAV mode, and it worked out pretty well. So this page just is, is the one is telling you which fork to take depending on which uh, runways you'll be landing at. Uh, last night we were initially assigned the ILS, the 28 left. It looks like from Sky Vector, it looks like Portland's uh, wind direction is still from the west. Yeah, 250 at 9. So we're just going to self-assign 28 left, and last night we got a last-minute switch from the left side to the right side. That was part of what threw me off. Uh, I think I was a little bit too aggressive in saying that I was able to accept that late switch. I should have probably had him pull me out of the sequence and give me a second in a, in a hold or, a, or just a vector to give me a little extra time and get that approach set up for 28 right when we got that late switch. Um, but I was a little too overconfident and uh, said uh, so we'd make the switch, wound up on a go-around, and uh, I think I made a few mistakes on the go-around that, that made the plane not behave the way it seemed like it should have been, although in retrospect, uh, probably it was doing exactly what I was telling it to do. I just wasn't telling it to do the right things. But um, today we'll just assume that we're in West Flow. We'll assume that we're going to get the ILS to 28 left, and we will brief that approach once we get up to... Uh, to the to point where we're nearing our descent, we'll talk about all that. Um, so that's the that's the route, and I think uh, it, like I said, it'll be a really good demo. We're gonna fully brief this Mustang departure um, once we kind of get it punched into the FMC and we see how it imports in there. So we'll talk more about that as well. Again, we're not flying this on the VATSIM network today, but um, we will kind of cycle through the radio uh, frequencies that we might get if we if if Reno and Portland were fully staffed. So part of what you can fall behind in the plane is when you have to switch radio frequencies while you're doing all the uh, aviating and navigating stuff. And so we'll kind of show you some, some tips and tricks on how to stay ahead, you know, one step ahead of the aircraft so that when you get that handoff from one uh, controller to the next, you're, you're kind of ready to one-click that and be ready to go. All right, I think we've talked enough about the briefing. Um, as I make this recording, it's quarter after 10 a.m. in uh, Eastern Time, so quarter after 7 a.m. Pacific Time. I've got the sim time advanced a little bit so that we've got sunlight. Uh, the plane does have some pretty good night lighting, but uh, it's just a little easier to see what's going on when you've got day. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say it's probably around quarter after 10 local time here in, uh, in Portland as well. And uh, we'll see if we can be off and airborne. What did I put in the spreadsheet? By 15 minutes from now, all right. Well, we'll we'll see. We'll see how that goes. We'll adjust as necessary. So, um, you know, sync your controls. Make sure that the the software and hardware controls are in the same position. And run the you know pedals and yoke. Get the yoke here and run it through its ranges. Make sure it's all in the same position as what your uh, your hardware controls are. Uh, throttle should be down. Uh, flap lever should be up, and spoiler lever should be up before you uh, get started. I like to put these generator switches in the down position before I start because that's kind of how you, you know, you would kind of shut those generators down after you, sh when, you're, when you're shutting the plane down so that those tend to boot in the on position. So I'll flip them into the off position before we start anything. And I've moved my viewpoint up so that we can see over the nose a little bit better. So uh, it kind of starts down here. And I think it probably works a little bit better on approach, at least if you have the viewpoint set a little higher. So that's personal preference thing, but, uh, I definitely recommend that. Uh, for the flight today, we are going to load the plane up with 4,369 pounds of fuel. Uh, let's flip this over into pounds. So 40, just try a 4,400. So that's 2,200 per tank. I think 74% or thereabouts. Uh, what did I say? 2,200? Yeah, let's, let's, let's just get it as close as we can. It doesn't have to be exact. 
So there we go. 43.69 is what I'm calling for in my planning spreadsheet. And uh, so 21.89 is approximately half of that. Just eyeballing it. It's close enough. Uh, we're going to set the payload. We'll, we'll find that this plane climbs like a rocket even when it's nearly fully loaded. So we'll go ahead and set the payload so that we're right there about 17,000 pounds. Uh, and one thing I forgot to do last night in calculating the uh, the V speeds for takeoff is entering the, the plane's weights into the FMC. So we'll get make sure we get that done correctly today. But we're like we've like I said, we're calling for just under 4,400 pounds to start, and we're you know our payload is loaded up to the gills so that we're right up near our maximum gross takeoff weight for today. And we'll show you where those values get put into the FMC to calculate your takeoff V speeds. Um, so we're all set there. Let's go ahead and start powering up. Let's get the battery on. Uh, nav and logo lights can come on. That's those two lights there. Uh, we'll get the avionics on. That's the switch over in the bottom right of that panel. Connect to ground power. Now, real quick, we could, this is kind of a good way to see uh, if you are if your mod is loaded correctly. If you hit the index button and you go to the next page and you go to the mod set. If you have this page here, then you have uh, uh, you have the mod. Um, no, it says, it says no external power is available. This is we ran into this last night as well. In most actual you know, starting locations, you should have the ability to connect ground power here. Uh, for some reason, at Reno Tahoe over here on the GA ramp, um, external power is not available. But most places where you start, uh, it will be. So. Uh, just an oddity of this particular starting location, but ordinarily you could connect the ground power there. Um, so we'll just skip that step for now. If we run through this startup sequence fast enough, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, go ahead and start the climate control and uh, static source to normal. Uh, we would file our flight plan on VATSIM right now through vPilot if we were connected to VATSIM, but we uh, are not. And uh, again, we would also use vPilot to check the ATIS or METAR at uh, Reno, uh, yeah, Reno Tahoe. Uh, since we are not, I'll just do that through, through Sky Vector for today. Come down here and kind of, whoops, there's it's further down here. Kind of hover over it, and uh, we'll get the METAR that way. It's uh, 360 at 19. Oh, we're going to be taking off to the north today. So it's going to be a little bit different than, than last night. So the, the Mustang 8 is for a southbound departure. Um, I want to show you that southbound, and we're going to take off with a tailwind today. So we're going to kind of do that uh, a little bit differently than you would in the real world. You take off to the north. You, you change from the Mustang 8 to, uh, what's the other one? I forget what it's called. Just the Reno. The Reno 9, yeah. So you would, ordinarily, you'd switch to the Reno 9, and you'd do that northbound departure in a, uh, a prevailing north wind. Uh, but I do want to show you this Reno 8, and I think it's worth the... the the uh, exercise to show you this particular departure. Um, so uh, we'll just we'll just pretend that our winds are from the south right now, and uh, it, yeah, hopefully we'll have not too odd behavior uh, that we're going to take off in a really gusty uh, tailwind, which you wouldn't do in the real world. Um, oh, but what was the uh, one thing I did miss was the barometric pressure altimeter setting. Altimeter is three zero one zero. So once you have the barometric pressure, you can set that up here, the barrel knob uh, up on the upper left, the primary flight display, we said 3010. A uh, good cross check to do is to make sure that the uh, ground elevation showing on the chart is uh, consistent with what's showing in your altimeter once you set it to the, uh, set it to the field. So 4415 is the origin elevation, and that's really close. So it's within about uh, 10 feet what's showing on the altimeter, so that's that's good. That means not only is your altimeter functioning properly, but in the sim, that means that your weather simulation is functioning properly as well. So that's a good uh, good check to make. Um, so we can shut off the comm too. I, I, I'm not sure that these fully translate into vPilot, but um, yeah, comm one volume should be turned up and comm one mic switch should be on, and that will allow us to transmit on comm one. Reno delivery, if uh, it was online, would be on 124.9. So we'll go and we'll hit tune, and uh, we'll go 124.9. Just pop that straight into the COM1 up top, and uh, we will get our clearance. So we would say Reno delivery 
Citation 514 Delta Victor. We have information alpha or whatever the ATIS information is. We are IFR to Portland. And they'd say, okay, you're cleared to Portland via the Mustang 8. Uh, that is filed. Maintain 8,000. And uh, there are no 10,000. Expecting flight level 3201 zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency will be 119.2. Squawk. One, two, three, four. Fill all that in on my little note sheet over here, and then we'll read all that back, and we'll say, okay, we're cleared to Portland, Mustang 8, departure, then it's filed, maintain 10,000, expecting 320 in 10, departure's 19.2, and 1, 2, 3, 4, or citation 514 Delta Victor, they say, read that, correct, you can call for taxi, one six left for departure. Okay, there we go. All good. So we go back down here into the tune page. We punch in that squawk number that they gave us, which was one, two, three, four, the ever ubiquitous one, two, three, four. Pop that in there. Pop that into TARA mode. That is uh, your altitude reporting mode as well. Now, again, the, the squawk code that you punch in will translate into vPilot and then will translate up into the VATSIM network but you do have to manually set mode C in the vPilot, which we showed you in the tutorial last night, but it's literally just clicking the giant blue button that says mode C in that uh, that's in pilot client. So um, the, tr the transponder code translates properly up into the network, but the transponder mode does not. So you just have to set that, uh, that mode C manually in the client as well. All right, let's go ahead and get our flight plan entered we're back down here. And, uh, whoops, we'll hit the uh, flight plan button. Uh, we're at Reno. Going to KPDX. We are going to depart via the Mustang 8 off of 16 left. Execute that. Back to the flight plan. Let's go to the next. Now, this is where... Ordinarily, you would then suddenly just go onto the Jet 92 to LMT uh, by doing this. J, whoops, J 92 here, but it says there's no airway match. So here's what you have to do for right now is you have to duplicate that last point in the departure. So whatever that last point that you end up on your departure, just put it again. So you'll see that we're going to the Mustang 8 to Mustang, and then from there we're going direct to Mustang. So you just have to duplicate that uh, for right now, and then it will work. So now we're on the J92 airway from Mustang. Oh, and again, oh, that, that, that one did work. Uh, to LMT. There. Uh, and we're going to that first one. That's uh, north and west, so that is consistent with where we are. Normally, it's going to be the top one. I think it orders these in the order that they are from you. So this will be the closest one most of the time, and that will be the correct one most of the time. So we're direct. Yeah, we're Mustang 8 to Mustang, and then direct from there to Mustang. Again, you just have to put that first one in twice. From there, we're on the Jet 92 airway to LMT, and then we're going to, uh, we're going to Moxie. XEE -E. and then we're taking the Timbers 2 arrival so you hit departure arrival and departure arrival again and now you can switch up to the arrivals we're going on the Timbers 2 um, not from Moxie because that means we won't be at the, the correct altitude for that we're going Timbers 2 just from Portal and then we're going to assume for now the ILS 28 left and if we get re- uh, Reassign when we get up there. We'll deal with that at the, at the time that it happens. We're not going to need any of these transitions into the ILS 28, as we can see. Uh, we're just going to take from uh, from the end of the star, which is at ice axe. This is where we're going to end up. We're just going to get vectored on the final from ice axe. So we don't need any of these transitions. We're just going to go uh, from the end of the star. We'll get vectored onto that uh, final approach course. So we don't need any of those um, transitions onto the IAP. So uh, just ILS-28 left without any of those transition forks. And we'll execute that. And uh, I think that should complete the route. Let's go now to the legs page, and we'll step through it. Um, 
Well, notice, so on this departure, we're supposed to track out three miles on the back course. Uh, to this point, Rich, Rich, you, you would, to, to be thorough, you would tune that back course, and you would also have that um, that radio beacon as your backup. But because uh, Rich, Rich 2 has imported into the FMC, and then we'll make our left turn off of Rich 2 on Mustang. So that's all correct. And we're uh, up to Mustang, and then we'll hit the uh, next page. Uh, and then uh, following the uh, J92, let's go to the, to the high. From Mustang, we're on the J92 to Windell and then to LMT, which is called Klamath Falls, and then uh, and then we're just direct to this point here, which is Moxie, and then we're on the rural Timbers arrival. So, looks like everything's good. We can, um, you can see that the altitude constraints on the arrival have, uh, have populated in as well. We'll actually brief that arrival once we get up to cruise. That'll give us something to do once we get up there. So for right now, we'll, we'll double check the arrival and we see this discontinuity, which we'll talk about later. Um, but everything else looks pretty good there. Yeah, it's telling us our battery's starting to get low, so we kind of have to hurry. Um, uh, the other thing we want to do before we do anything else is we want to go into the performance page. Um, we want to set our takeoff data. Uh, the outside air temp is saying it's three degrees. We can just pop that right in here. Just read that right off the bottom of the uh, MFD. And uh, none of this else really matters too much, so we can skip all that for now. But you want to do put the temperature in and go to the next page. Uh, we do want to do use a flaps 15. Oh, I'm sorry. Go back. One thing that's very critical is we do need to put in our weights. So we got to go into the performance initialization page. This is what I forgot last night. So performance initialization, that's what we forgot. Um, so it is going to sense the amount of fuel you have. 4378 is correct. Um, but you do want to put in uh, some numbers that match up with the, uh, the weight that you are. We're just going to say eight passengers. And we know that the total weight is going to be 17,000 pounds, more or less. So right now we get to just basically add a thousand pounds of cargo. If you don't do this, the plane's going to give you uh, uh, takeoff ref speeds that are too low. So yeah, right, right about seventeen thousand pounds. So that's perfect. That's um, it. Doesn't exactly matter how what you put into those numbers as long as the total weight at matches up with what you put in up here in the plane, which again was very close to uh, seventeen thousand pounds. So get those as close as you can, and then we can kind of go ahead. Now we can go and do our performance and our takeoff, and we put in our temperature, and on the next page, now we've got V speeds that make sense. Uh, 110, 111 will be our V rotation, 117 is our, is our takeoff safety speed. So basically, uh, V1 is our abort speed. If we have any problems before 110, we'll, we'll stop, we'll abort to take off. Uh, if we have any problems above 110, we'll, we'll take off with them. <laughs> uh, VR is 111, that's when we're gonna rotate. Uh, V2 is uh, the speed that we'll accelerate to if we have an engine out, and VT is what we'll accelerate to if we still have two good engines uh, on takeoff. So we'll go ahead and send those, and those will send right over to the uh, FMC, and you can see they've now populated in the primary flight display. Okay, so that was the, the step that we missed last night. All right, I like having this in uh, present position mode. Uh, FR, MT, I'm told, says it means format, but if you just hit format a few times, it'll... Uh, It'll change the uh, the way that uh, appears, and then over here, I like hitting map or mem two and putting it into plan mode. One thing we can do in plan mode, let's um, zoom it out a little bit. In uh, plan mode, we can go to the uh, MFD advanced page, and we'll just keep hitting next as we kind of step through the uh, planned route and make sure that it looks good, makes sense. Okay. Once we get up top here, we can kind of zoom it back in. Let's look at it in a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's keep hitting uh, next. And we can see that there is a discontinuity there where you would maintain. So here's on the star. The timber star says uh, after ice axe, you maintain that 103 heading. 
So there's a tendency to want to connect that discontinuity, and that's what I did last night, knowing that I would just have to pop it into heading mode manually. But I didn't do it fast enough, and I started turning onto that approach before I was cleared to do that. So really, you should leave that discontinuity there, because that is exactly correct the way it's depicted. Um, so that, so that's, that's why we'll leave that discontinuity the way it is. So everything there looks good. We can now put this back into our two-way point, which is the one that we're currently headed to, and we'll leave it there centered, and uh, I think that's it. We're good to go. We'll change the range back to... Uh, oh, we might need to kind of see that rich, rich, dew, rich, rich dew point. So we'll not zoom it in too much for our departure. All right, so everything looks good. Uh, let's go ahead and arm flight level change. And run the speed bug up to 240. 240 is kind of your default um, departure speed. If your departure procedure calls for a different speed restriction, you can set that. Otherwise, you pretty much want to set it at 240. Uh, heading or nav mode. So we're actually going to put it into uh, nav, LNAV1. You see it lights up at the top of the primary flight display because we're just going to plane is going to take us straight to that point rich Jew, and then turn us toward Mustang, which is consistent with the procedure. Some procedures say maintain runway heading until vectored, in which case you would set a uh, heading mode there. Just as a backup plan, we do want to have the heading of the runway set in. Uh, but you don't always, always assume runway heading. Your departure procedure will tell you what you should be doing on departure. 167 in this case. Um, sometimes it's runway heading, sometimes it's like, you know, immediate left turn to whatever, whatever, whatever. So you want to look at the departure procedure and dial in what it says to do and not necessarily just runway heading because runway heading is, is, uh, seems to make sense. Look at that departure procedure and dial in what it tells you to do. In this case, though, 167, um, we're not going to put it in the heading mode, though, because the heading mode is just going to be a backup. We're going to be LNAV to that point, Rich Jew, and then to the Mustang VOR. So, all right, so then we've got that dialed in, and then the initial altitude we were given was 10,000. Let's dial that into the altitude here. See again, up the upper right of the primary flight display. Oops, passed it. Come back down. All right, so 10,000 is uh, dialed in. Okay, good. And I think somehow when we did that, we've popped it out of flight level change mode. So maybe we need to uh, maybe we need to set the altitude first and then put it in flight level change mode, probably. So we'll there we go. All right, at this point, we would disconnect the ground power again through this uh, index page. We can go uh, index, next, on set, and disconnect the ground power. But, of course, remember, we didn't have any there, so uh, we're good to go. But we are ready to go ahead and fire up the plane. Let's get the beacon lights on. And safety lights. And seatbelt lights. May I have your attention, please? For engine start, we will turn the climate control off. Please fasten your seat belt and shoulder harness. And uh, we will start by engaging the starter on the number two engine. The start procedure is real simple in this plane. Hit the starter, 17%. Hit the uh, run switch. So we're watching the N2 climb at this point to 17%. Go ahead and pop the uh, run switch cover off. Engage run, cover back on. Watch the engine spool up the rest of the way. We'll make sure that uh, temperatures and pressures all remain within normal ranges. Anything starts to look bad, we abort the start, but for right now, everything is uh, peachy keen in the green. Once it gets up to about 50, you'll notice the starter will automatically disengage. Almost at 50 there, 49, 50. Starter has, uh, starter's still on for the moment. There it goes, now it's popped off. And uh, now we can go ahead and turn that generator on, restart recharging our battery. Uh, left side process is exactly the same. Starter.
wait for 17%. In the meantime, I'm going to adjust my planning spreadsheet. We're going to probably be uh, about... Let's see, it's... 1535 Zulu now will probably be airborne. Uh, missed 17%. Once it's over 17%, again, hit the run switch. Take away or be airborne about 10 minutes from now. So, again, watching the rest of that start, make sure that uh, temps and pressures all remain green. It's 50. The starter will automatically click off. There it is. And then we can stick the generator on. Everything should be good to go. You notice all the warnings have disappeared from our uh, our MFD, so everything is good. This is where we would go ahead and check our flight controls. We're pretty much ready to taxi at this point. We'll check our flight controls. I'm going to hit the system button here twice. One and two. Uh, now, these indicators don't move back and forth as they should. That's probably a work in progress. Um, but you can, you know, yoke full forward, yoke full back, and then neutral. Ailerons full left, full right, and then neutral, and then rudder full right, full left, and then neutral. And then uh, at some point, those uh, indicators will be working. But for right now, I just leave that in the checklist because I presume that's something that the developers will, uh, will be working on. Um, so everything's good now. We'll go ahead and set flaps. 15. I think what we found in the working title discord is that uh, adjusting the trim so that it is at the bottom of that green range uh, tends to kind of work best for departure. So we'll do that. And uh, last thing to do is go ahead and get the pitone static, uh, your, aka your probe heats, get that up and running. And I think we are ready, guys. We can get the, oh, the taxi light on, that one there. I think we're ready to go. We'll pop the parking brake off. Uh, we want to uh, check in with Reno Ground before we go anywhere. Our taxi route, by the way, again, we're departing off uh, 1 6 left, even though uh, today the tail, you know, today there's a pretty hefty tailwind. So hopefully the takeoff will go okay. But again, I want to really um, demonstrate this Mustang 8 departure. So we'll just presume that the winds are coming from the south. We're parked somewhere over here in this area. So we'll head out to uh, Charlie northbound. And uh, one six left full length there. So that's our anticipated taxi plan. Of course, the ground controller uh, might tell us something different, but uh, I wouldn't expect them to. You know, grounds on 121.9. Again, you would get that off your VAT sim client. Uh, but for today, we're just going to assume we're on 121.9. Point nine. We can just pop that in there. Uh, we know that the Reno tower frequency is 118.7. So we can pop that into the standby, and then switching to the tower in a moment will be a one-click, uh, one-click. So if you pop, pop it into standby, um, the recall, and then you hit that button again, it will swap those. So that's uh, that's how that works there. So we're on ground frequency right now, 121.9. So we'll go Reno ground, citation 514 Delta Victor. We've got information Bravo. We are ready to taxi uh, runway 16 left. We're at the GA ramp uh, east side of the field. And they will say, okay, uh, citation 514 Delta Victor, runway 16, taxi via Charlie. Okay, 16 left via Charlie, 514 Delta Victor. Okay, so parking brake is off. Uh, let's make sure we don't run over this guy yet. All right, just move it. Move it or lose it, dude. There's no horn button on this plane. Beep, beep. Yeah, we don't want to watch him uh, get ingested into the engine, so we won't change to, uh, to an outside view here. <laughs> we'll make our way out to Charlie and then northbound on Charlie. Oh, one thing now that we're moving, real quick, super super quick, passenger briefing, and select that takeoff briefing. Welcome aboard the Citation CJ4 aircraft. Your flight crew will make every effort to make your trip a pleasant one. At this time. Please refer to the passenger briefing card located near your seat for important safety. Uh, we do want to do a brake check real quick before we get out onto the uh, active taxiway, so we'll check brakes. Okay, brakes are working. Taxiway is clear. We'll go ahead and enter Charlie and head north. 
lighted, no smoking, and seatbelt signs. We know we're departing on 1-6, so we hopefully uh, will be taxiing in approximately a 3-4 direction. That's one thing you want to kind of check as a, as a sanity check there. So, yeah, so we're taxiing roughly 3-4 for a uh, departure on 1-6, so that tends to, that, that seems to make sense. We get a little bit of extra speed going here. On the taxi out, we've, uh, we can get our weather radar on. Terrain and weather, we'll click that. The uh, first time is terrain, hit it again and it's weather. You can see there's the little scanner on the top of that uh, present position mode, a little indicating that the weather scan is occurring. On the right side, we can shut off the passenger briefing menu. That meant briefing will continue even though you set the MFD back to its engine monitors. That's fine. I like having the terrain radar up on that right side. So we'll click that twice. And again, this is not, in, in uh, plan mode, it's not a moving map, uh, but we'll just manually adjust it so that, uh, so watch where I'm going here. Manually adjust it, we'll go back to uh, MFD advance, set it to the two way point. We can actually step it ahead a couple. So that's not an automatic moving map but I'll just manually move it forward to kind of keep track of our position as we go. Other thing on the taxi out, now this is not, I don't know that it's listed in the procedures for the CJ4, um, but in a lot of airliners you would set the continuous ignition on during departure and arrival, so we'll go ahead and do that there. The plane does come with um, built-in checklists, by the way. I don't use them. I use my own flow lists. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's all kinds of checklists right here built into the MFD that you can use if you like. Neat feature. I find it a little cumbersome to do in the sim, especially with the mouse clicks. Um, so I just keep my checklist separate on a, uh, on a separate document over here. But they do have uh, built-in checklists right here in the uh, MFD, which is a nice nice feature. All right, so we're coming up on this little little chicane to the right here, to use a racing term. Passenger briefing almost done. If you get up to the whole short line and the passenger briefing is not done, you just have to let Tower know that we uh, need another minute or two to secure the uh, cabin here. For information on the location and We're almost done. As well as other uh, at this point, you'd get your hand off to uh, Tower. So we can go ahead back into the tune menu. Flip up to the tower frequency, 118.7. You want to preset your departure, which was 119.2. Okay, there we go. Our passenger briefing is done. So let's preset 19.2. Again, you want to do this, do this now while you're on the ground. Put that into the standby. So again, towers on 18.7, departures on 19.2. At the whole short line, you pretty much want to have that departure frequency preset so that it'll save you some typing when you're, uh, when you're on the fly here. All right, autopilot mode should be in uh, VNAV. Yeah, I'm sorry, LNAV and flight level change. Let's verify that that is still the case, and it is. Uh, altitude select is armed in white there shows that it's uh, getting ready to capture that 10,000 foot altitude departure frequency is preset and then uh, pretty much when we're cleared to take the runway uh, so uh, Reno Tower citation 514 Delta Victor short of 16 left ready and it's a uh, 16 left clear for takeoff uh, wind whatever 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 and then they don't give you a separate instruction that just means fly the departure that you filed all right, so taking the runway, we'll go ahead and get the landing lights, strobe lights, and pulse lights on. Check and make sure final's clear, even though the controller suggested it was. It's always good to double check. All right, let's smoothly advance the throttles. We don't have to be aggressive. Smoothly advance the throttles, make sure temps and pressures are all look good. And it's a FADEC throttle, you just pop it all the way into takeoff mode. 
keep the center line. Watch your uh, airspeed tape. We'll have your V speeds automatically populated there. Remember, there's V1 and rotate. We're one knot away from each other, so there we go. All right, yeah, that's working not too bad at all. Let's rotate up to 140. Pitch as best as we can to maintain that 140 gear can come up. Positive climb is confirmed. Field elevation was 44 and change, so we'll go to 54 and change. All right, and now, now we can uh, pitch down, start accelerating. We'll get the flaps retracted. We'll get the autopilot engaged and let him start turning us towards that uh, that point rich coup, and then we'll automatically get us turned toward uh, Mustang. Now, on this departure, guys. Oh, and by the way, citation 514 Delta Victor contact departure. One departure, 514 Delta Victor. Okay, so there's uh, 19 2. Yep. Reno departure citation 514 Delta Victor is climbing through 6700 going to 10,000. 514 Delta Victor, Roger. Radar contact. Okay, so that's achieved 240 knots, and it's turning us toward Mustang. Now, if we don't get to 10,000 by the time we get to Mustang, we do have to climb to 10,000, climb in holding pattern to depart at or, at or above the minimum and route altitude for your segment. So we have to get to 10,000 before we can leave Mustang. If we don't get to Mustang in time, or if we don't get to 10,000 in time, we'll need to turn and uh, join a holding pattern there. But we just got the altitude alert saying we're at 93, 94. So we're gonna be at Mustang in plenty of time. We're at 10,000 in plenty of time for Mustang. Departure control is now gonna clear us up to 17,000. So we'll dial in 17,000. It did, it did flip to altitude capture mode. So we'll need to pop it back into flight level change uh, and make sure that uh, Oh, it automatically put us at 300. So now I'm going to pitch to 280. Kind of go 240 below 10,000, 280 above. And we can pop this into uh, climb, by the way, from where it's still in takeoff. We'll pop it into climb and uh, turn the continuous ignitions off. And now it should be turning us from Mustang north and west toward uh, Klamath Falls. Pitch to 280. Also through 10,000, we can get the uh, taxi lights off, landing lights off, logo lights off. And let's just uh, run through and make sure we did everything. Yeah, we're good. We're caught up. Now that we're in our climb, we can zoom our map out a little bit. Departure's going to clear us up to, uh, it's going to hand us off to center, actually. Center frequency is uh, 3355. So we'll go, all right, 133.55. Now watch, if you want to just put it straight in to the active, it's going to pop that 19.2 down into the standby so you can remember what frequency you were just on, which is nice. So we'll say uh, Oakland Center, citation 514 Delta Victor, through 16,000 for 17,000. Citation 514 Delta Victor, roger. Climate maintains flight level 320. So we'll go ahead and set that up to 320. Again, it did automatically flip over to altitude capture, so we want to put it back into flight level change at 280. There's commas 320. There we are. All right, and everything is proceeding swimmingly so far. You can see that the, uh, the MFD indicates that we are in climb mode, and it's it's a FADEC throttle, so it's automatically going to maintain uh, the proper amount of thrust for climb mode all the way up, so there's nothing we need to do with the throttles. All right, we're through 18,000 now. We can just bump the uh, barrow button once. It goes from 3010 instantly to 2992. 
the aircraft is automatically going to switch itself over into uh, Mach hold from uh, from from indicated airspeed hold at 25,000 feet. So the next thing to do is kind of just monitor that and make sure it's going to go from uh, 280. It's going to go to Mach 0.64 for the remaining climb to cruise above 25,000. That will happen automatically, but we do want to kind of just monitor that and make sure that uh, that it happens. The other thing we can do while we've got a second, again, we can. And this is just a personal preference thing. You can set this to um, to rose mode, uh, just to, to confirm your you know your, your airway tracking compliance is good or whatever mode you want to put that in. Uh, that's present position mode, kind of same as a, that's a terrain mode with the present position. I like having that in overhead mode with uh, the you know the overhead the north up plan mode. I just like having it there right uh, that way with the terrain on. Just kind of helps me see how how the flight's progressing. It's just a personal preference thing that you can set that however you like. Um, but then again, it's not an automatic moving map, so we'd have to come into MFD Advance and just go to the uh, currently two waypoint, and then we could advance it even one further. Right now. You see, the climb performance does naturally deteriorate as you as you go. So we're getting about 1,600 feet a minute. But again, that uh, that phatic throttle. If, if you leave it in climb, the, uh, the 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 climb click there, that phatic throttle is going to just automatically adjust the N1 as you climb. When we get up to cruise, we can go over that uh, arrival procedure, that Timbers 2. We'll show you some, a little bit of a bump there. You'll notice that it stopped climbing, or it seems to stop climbing for a second. I think that was probably just a shift in the simulation of the barometric pressure outside. Because you notice we were still getting yeah, so I think that the barometric pressure is, is simulation is changing, and that's why we're getting these little fluctuations. But it's still doing a pretty good job of uh, automatically sending us up toward our cruise altitude. Coming up on this point, Windell, you'd actually get handed off to uh, Seattle Center. We'll say that uh, for purposes of today, it's on 124.2. Again, we're currently on 33.55, so we could 124.2, and we could hit it into the uh, recall, but if we're just handed off straight to that frequency, just put it right into COM1, and again, that 33.55 that we were just on goes into the recall, so if for whatever reason we end up on the wrong frequency, we can always go back to the one we were just on. So that's a real nice feature of that radio, whether you can put it into recall and then swap it, or if you put it straight into the active, it, it'll still save that last frequency that you were just on. So at this point, we'll just go Seattle Center, citation 514 Delta Victor. We're climbing through uh, flight level 250, going up to flight level 320. And you can see that the uh, the mock yeah, it did switch, the flight level change did switch automatically, just as I was saying that. It switched itself automatically over that Mach 0.64 climb. You can adjust that. You can, um, you know, you can adjust the speed, you know, 60. Oh, weird. <laughs> Weird, it adjusted back down to uh, it'll pop back over. I'm pretty sure to mock mode. I didn't do anything with it. It just kind of popped over there for a second. Let's see what it does at two six zero. There it goes. Um, so you can uh, you can pop that down 63, 64, 65, whatever. 64 just is the is the optimal climb uh, mock number four. So it's weird, it popped over and then it popped back and then it popped over again. I wasn't doing that, I was just moving the uh, view. But yeah, it does automatically make that transition, so now we know between 250 and 260, it makes that automatic transition from indicated airspeed mode to uh, mock mode. And again, altitude select, altitude select is armed, you can see, because the armed mode is, is going to show up in white. So green is what it's currently doing and white is what it's about to be doing.
and you gotta take a minute. In flights in 2020, you gotta take a minute every now and then and take a peek out the window. I think over here we're done with the uh, done with the Mustang. We can start looking at the timbers. We'll uh, we'll look at this in more detail in just a moment. Uh, just want to watch it get the rest of the way up to cruise. Uh, we'll go through the legs and we'll uh, we'll show you how the altitude constraints populate in, and uh, we will we'll maybe show you how to uh, fix any of them that need to be fixed. They're not 100% accurate all the time. Five hundred feet to go, or thereabouts. A lot of times you wait until you're at cruise to turn the seatbelt light off, but uh, Seems to be nice and smooth up here. We're just getting to the point where we're about to level off and uh, don't anticipate any reason that uh, we wouldn't be able to, to uh, release the passengers. So you guys can go ahead and start raising the fridge now, if you like. Not typically a flight attendant on a flight like this, but there's a... So probably a mini bar back there and you guys can start cracking stuff open and start the party without me. Yep, okay, we're a thousand to go, there we go. You should see in just a moment it will uh, it'll flip over to altitude capture. Five hundred to go. There we go. So it's now going to start to level us off. Still got the throttle set to climb for right now, but we'll show you. There is a tiny, tiny little adjustment that they need to make with the FADEC throttles. We're at, look, look, we're at 98.7 right now in climb. As we pop it out of climb into cruise, yeah, we should, shouldn't be able to get higher uh, N1 in cruise than in climb, um, but we, you'll notice that we actually can. Okay, so there's, we're leveled off at 320. You'll notice if we pop it out of the, uh, out of the cr uh, climb setting into the very top of the cruise range now, you'll notice that we can actually sneak it up almost to 100, yeah, just, just over 100 there in cruise. So a little bit of a bug. Normally the climb is always going to be higher than your highest cruise setting, but for right now we'll just uh, take it as it is. We're there, and now we're at, at, at Point Wendell, heading to uh, Klamath Falls. Uh, and uh, what we're told by the uh, developer of this thing, who you know has a bunch of hours in the real deal, says that you pretty much just take it right up to the bottom of that uh, right up to the bottom of the red range there, the warning range. Just fly it as close as you can to the uh, to where the overspeed warning kicks in. We'll make a couple of adjustments once we get it accelerated to our cruise speed to uh, looks like it's going to be settling in at about 285 or thereabouts. Right, so once we get it up there, let's let's back the throttle off just a touch. See what 97.0 gets us. Mach 732, 733 still still kind of climbing. The, the speed is climbing. That is not the plane. 
734. Yeah, all right, so let's take it down to uh, 96 and a half. All right, well, we lost it. Lost a whole uh, whole percent and one there. So 96.0. Let's see how that does us. Seven three seven. Up and down just another little bit. Ninety five and a half. Okay, now it seems like it's. between 284 and 285 and about 735 okay so whoop well, oh, oh, now it's dropping let's go 90 let's go a little bit closer to 96 then all right I mean that we'll, we'll continue to monitor that but you, you want to kind of just find a speed that's right below that red range and uh, just adjust the throttle until it stabilizes there at that speed um, before we take a quick break out of the cockpit well and for the purposes of the video we'll time warp forward to top of the set but before we do that, we do want to go ahead and brief that arrival, and we'll skip through the legs page. Now, this is the Timbers 2 arrival. I always just use um, the FAA Digital Terminal Procedures page. Actually, let's just um, let's just back out of that so that I can kind of show you. This is the link that I use uh, for getting the uh, U.S. Um, terminal charts, you know, departure arrival, air, air, airport diagrams, uh, approach charts. And uh, you just go to this procedure search, and you can punch in the airport that you want. We're at P uh, PDX, and then you'll see all the uh, all the charts here. But I've already got it pulled up the timbers, um, and then the second page. Of the, so you start down down here at the um, at these uh, transition points. You you kind of merge up to this point where it's Moxie, and then up to timbers, and then there's a continuation page where timber starts down here, and then. Uh, at this point, flowers where you fork off depending on your arrival runway. And then you go to the second continuation page and it tells you which fork to take depending on which runways we're landing on. We're going to assume that we're still landing 28 left or 28 right. So we, we know that we're on the fork that, that ends there at Ice Axe. So we'll see that. Uh, we'll see that it's this fork here that we want to follow ending at uh, ice X. All right, so you can uh, pull that up and play along at home. I'm going to have that off screen as we go through the legs page. Let's see how we're doing with the speed. It's dropped a little bit, 280. All right, we'll put another... Let's hope we'll bump it up a little bit to 96 and a quarter. Uh, 96 and a half might be too much. Let's back it down just a little bit. This isn't the most high quality throttle control, but it doesn't do too bad. So we'll see how that gets us. Definitely kind of want to be hovering between 280 and 285, I think. So, all right. So while that's shaking out, let's go ahead and step through the legs page here and uh, make sure that all these constraints are indeed listed. So on the first page of the timbers, now we're not picking this up from the bottom end. We're picking this up and we're direct to Moxie, but we're not actually picking up the uh, arrival until portal. However, you know, I think Moxie, we can, we're definitely going to be at 240 and above. So even though, uh, you know, we're not really starting the procedure until here, I think we can probably just put in that, uh, that constraint at Moxie, um, 24,000 or above at Moxie, and we can put that there. All right, at portal, we should be between 11 and 240, and that is correct. Uh, the one thing you'll notice on this uh, arrival is that it says we should be at 270 knots there. Now, there's not a whole lot of value in putting the speed restrictions into this FMC because, you know, again, the, the throttle is ma manually managed. So eh, we're still struggling. Let's, let's go up to about 96 and a half then. Um, throttle's manually managed, so there's not a whole lot of value in putting the speed restraints in here. Um, but it doesn't hurt to show how it's done. 270 and then a slash, whoops, not 27.0, 270, and then a slash. And uh, that was at what point? Timbers, is that correct? That was at uh, Portal. Yeah, 270 knots at Portal. So that's how it pops in. Again, you know, you've, you've still had, you're still manually gonna have to hit that speed. 
Um, but it doesn't hurt as you step through the legs page to have it there just as a visual reference. For me, I'm going to keep this chart up on my second monitor, and I'm going to monitor as we go, you know, keep track of where we are, and I'm going to hit the speed restrictions off of the chart. But again, it's, it, it never hurts to have that, uh, that redundancy just so that at a quick glance you can see in the FMC that you need to be at a certain speed by your next leg or whatever. Uh, timbers, again, it's 270 knots uh, at or above 11,000. 11,000 and above is already in there, uh, but we can put the 270 knot restriction in just, uh, just for sake of thoroughness. Uh, let's go to the next page. Uh, let's see how we are with the speed there. Yeah, we're back up to 285. And it looks like it's uh, so 96 and a half. Looks like it's uh, it's doing us here. So we'll leave it there. Um, Vance. Uh, again, so that uh, that point we're on the next page, the continuation page. So Vance is 11 to 15 and 250 knots. So 11 to 15 is is in there correctly. Uh, 11,000 or above, 15,000 or below. Uh, but we can go ahead and put the 250 knot restriction in just again, just for the exercise. 250, uh, and then flower between seven and nine. No speed restriction there. Okay, that's correct. Windmers 5,000 exactly. You see on the chart we got 5,000 with a line above and below. That means it has to be exactly at 5,000 there. And you see you also have to be exactly at 210 knots. So we'll go 210 and the slash. Pop that in. And then row age and ice axe don't have any specific altitudes or. Um, speeds associated with them so all right so everything's correct there and then again we're kind of presuming that um we're going to get this ils to 28 left which is uh you know we presume we're going to get vector to the final uh, pick it up from hannah and then adam and then the inup and then the runway uh, it is common for not all those points to import because that's all that's a, a straight path at that point uh, but it's good to double check the altitude restraints, I guess. Uh, 2,900 or above at Hannah, 2,000 or above at Adam. And that says 2,000 exactly. Um, again, the, the chart says 2,000 or above, but at that point you're intercepting the final approach fix on the glide slope, so you really do want to be at 2,000 and not 2,000 or above. So the F, you want the FMC to guide you to exactly 2,000 so we can intercept that uh, Glide slope right there at that point, so we'll leave that as it is. All right, and again, we're assuming we're going to get assigned the 28 left, and for the purposes of today's tutorial, we are going to get assigned the 28 left uh, because there's no one to tell us otherwise. But uh, again, if you want to see what happens when you get a last minute runway switch, look at the one from last night. <laughs> and keep in mind that it didn't go perfectly, but uh, it, it is possible that it would happen that way as we found out last night. Uh, we're up to 290 now, so again, yeah, let's back the back the throttle off to about 90 to the low 96, yeah, 96.0, and we'll watch the speed slowly drift back down to about 285. But other than that, let's see, we bump the map range up. Now, nah, see, I, what I do is like when I bump the map range as high as it'll go until it starts to get kind of cluttered. Oh, we can see the top of the scent mark up here. So we know we're going to start descending right before we get to that point in Moxie. So, um, so I think for purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to maintain 320 and uh, somewhere around 285 knots until we get close to that top of the scent. And uh, so we'll time warp ahead to that point, and we'll show you what happens uh, once you start arriving at that top of the scent. We'll talk through the radio calls that you would get from the approach the, uh, the uh, center controller once that happens as well. All right, so uh, I'm going to take a break, break out of the cockpit. You can pause if you need to, but otherwise we'll uh, be talking to you again, uh, approaching top of descent. All right, guys, back in the cockpit, and uh, not too much has happened while you were gone, except that we can see that our setting of 96% N1 has kept us right in that 280 to 285 range, so that's good. Um, we are just yeah we're still about 80 miles from top of the scent so we've got a little ways to go um, but you can start to see you know, can see that there are starting to be some weather returns we can look out the window and we can see that it's gotten a little bit cloudy here uh, so we will on our descent and arrival and you can see that the outside air temps are well below freezing 
it'll get warmer as we go down but <clears throat> uh, you, as we get through this cloud layer if we're still in uh ooh, we're getting rocked around pretty good here i'll tell you what while we're while we're thinking about it let's go ahead and get the seatbelt signs back on Um, but as I was saying, as we come down through this cloud layer, we know that the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 does model icing pretty well uh, as far as not only the visual effects but the aerodynamic effects. Um, and there are some anti-icing measures in this plane. Now the tail of the icing we found out last night is not yet modeled. These buttons here do not work yet. Uh, wing light does work, although it's daytime. We don't really need the wing light to, uh, to look at the ice buildup. Um, but the wing and engine anti-icing works. If we wanted to do engine-only anti-icing, that works. And then, of course, I think if we're in icing, you know, just um, just as a, uh, a checklist, I believe that you would have the engines in continuous ignition as well, just to prevent any possible, you know, or, or reduce the possibility, I guess, of an of a engine flame out in that situation. So we would hit those four uh, if we needed to as we come down through that cloud layer if we're still in freezing conditions, which I'm thinking we will be close to uh, zero degrees Celsius at that point. Um, don't know exactly what the uh, altitude of those clouds are, but I have a feeling we're pretty close to freezing at, the, at that point, so we will engage the engine anti-icing when we get there. All right, so still 80 miles from top of descent, too early, I think, to uh, talk about our descent clearance just yet, so I think we'll time warp forward Again, just a little ways to uh, get a little closer in. And uh, guys, make sure your seat belts are securely fastened. Looks like we're getting it's getting a little rough up here. So, all right, well, we'll uh, talk to you in a few. All right, guys, we're back in the cockpit, and you can see that uh, yeah, we did pull the N1 down another almost percent. Still kind of flirting with that 290 knot speed. <laughs> See the weather is, uh, you know, kind of closing in on us. So we'll have uh, some interesting conditions as we come down. We're just under 40 miles from top of descent. And uh, let's talk now about the instruction that we would get on a descent profile like this. It's uh, you know, the common phraseology in the U.S. when you have a, uh, an arrival that's got all these intermediate level off points or intermediate altitude restrictions, the, the uh, instruction that you'll get from the center controller is descend via the Timbers 2 arrival. And then because there's different forks depending on which way uh, the airport ops is flowing, you know, they need to let us know we don't get our approach, our, our runway assignment until we talk to the approach controller. But the center controller will at least let us know, you know, is Portland landing east? which would be this fork out to Brew, or Portland Landing West, which would be this force out to this fork out to ISAX. So the, the instruction we'll get is uh, Citation 514 Delta Victor descend via the Timbers 2 arrival, Portland Landing West, Portland Altimeter, uh, what was it, 3024, I think it was. Let's, 3025, it might have updated. Okay, so, so Citation 514 Delta Victor, Seattle Center, descend via the Timbers 2 arrival, Portland Landing West, Portland down to 3025. And of course, we'll have gotten the ATIS information at Portland as well, so Portland information, Charlie might be current, saying that they're, you know, arriving at the parting runways 28 left, 28 right, you know, ILS approaches in use, and uh, <clears throat> wind and altimeter. Wind, by the way, 250 at 8. So if we're 28, so we're landing on 28 and the wind's 250, so it's 30 degrees left to right. Uh, but 8 knots, not too significant, fortunately. All right, but we got our descent via. We, uh, we know that the lowest altitude constraint on the timbers is uh, this 5,000 foot mark at Widmer. So we've gotten our, our clearance to descend via that arrival to 5,000. Now we can't go straight to 5,000. We've got to hit all those intermediate constraints on the way. But when we're given that descend via, we are pretty much cleared all the way down to the lowest altitude constraint. Now it's going to mark it as flight level 50 uh, until 
we get it back into standard uh, barometer mode. But the other thing we can do is we can arm VNAV, and you can now see that VOUT has lit up, which is what we're currently doing, and the vertical path is now armed. When we get to that point, and it's already populated in that first constraint uh, of 240 at MOXIE, which was the one that we manually entered. We're not technically on the arrival at MOXIE, but again, we manually entered that constraint. That's 240 or above. So it's not going to maybe descend this all the way to 240 at MOXIE, but we'll definitely be above it at that point. And again, we're assuming still 2-8 left. We haven't gotten an, uh, a runway assignment from approach you know, from, yeah, from, from the controller yet. Yeah, we'll get that. Once we can hand it off from the center controller to the approach controller, that's when we get our runway assignment. Coming up on that TOD now. As soon as it clicks over into path, we'll pull the power back to about 60%. And again, the seatbelt lights are already on. That's the other thing you would do at this stage. I put them on early because of the turbulence, but the other thing you would do as you're, okay, there we go, now we're descending. Or no, that was just a, that's just a bump in the, uh, now I thought it was starting to descend, but no, it has, it hasn't clicked over into capturing that vertical path yet, so. Saw the needle dip in it. Okay, here we go. Now you can see that, uh, that what they call the snowflake coming down. So as it gets to the point where it's about to capture that vertical path, that's when you'll see it click over, and that's when you can go ahead and pull the power back. Yeah, we're getting rocked. <laughs> okay, now it's in vertical path with altitude select as the... Uh, As the armed mode, so we'll pull the power back as we start that descent. I like to pull it back to about 60. And then we'll need to adjust as necessary to maintain that 280. Remember, it's 280 is our first speed restriction on this arrival. And you want to descend at 280. I mean, typically you descend at 280 until you get to 10,000, and then you descend at 240 below 10,000. Um, but on this arrival, we're going to have some intermediate constraints that we've got to hit, so we've got to do a little bit more speed management than that even. But yeah, at portal, at the portal waypoint, 270 knots. So we'll aim for, we'll kind of keep it at 280 for now. Put a couple of percent N1 back in. Watch the speed stabilize at about 280. Bump it up to about 75 there, see how that does us. Okay, and you can see that magenta bubble showing the target descent rate, and the plane is automatically pitching to match that descent rate. At portal, according to the chart, the next altitude constraint is between 11,000 and 240. And then the hardest, the, uh, the, you know, the next one after that is timbers at 11,000. So we should see. Yeah, now at Portal, you know, we've got that broad range of altitudes we could be at, but you'll see once we get closer to Timbers, you'll see that 11,000 will populate at the top of that, uh, that primary flight display as the next constraint that we have to hit. We're going to go ahead and start pulling the speed down to 270 now. Again, the speed management on the descent is all pilots' manual job, so we'll pull Pull the power back to 60. <clears throat> At this point, what might happen is you might hear the aircraft ahead of you headed into Portland get a handoff to Portland approach on 124.35. So again, we'll go to tune. We'll pop that in here. Probably won't be given that just yet, 124.35. We probably wouldn't be given that handoff until we're closer to uh, transition altitude, but at least we'll put it in the recall now. We don't know for sure that we're getting that same handoff because who knows if they're going to a different airport. But, uh, you know, we kind of guess maybe that that aircraft 
is heading in the same direction we are, we might well get that same handoff to that same frequency. So we can pop that in. We're still on Seattle Center 124.2, uh, but we think we might get a handoff to Portland Approach on 124.35, so we've got it there at the ready. Uh, so 270 knots is, is good now, so we'll keep the M1 right there about 60. Monitor that as we go down. You can see that the FMC has imported that next altitude constraint of 11,000 there. We're still on vertical path with altitude select arms, so that's good. We're still in LNAV. <clears throat> Over here on the map, we can kind of just step the Next, next, next. Yeah, we'll just step that ahead a little bit. Go back to the tune page. Speed's slipping a little bit below 270, so we'll... With a 5% N1 in it. What's the tolerance? I think it's plus or minus 10 knots for a speed restriction. But we'll, we'll try and do even better than that. You definitely would verify your ATIS information at the arrival. Let's just call it information Charlie. But again, for today, we're just pulling the METAR. Let's just uh, reload the page. It probably, just probably automatically refreshes. But just to verify that nothing major has changed, 25088 is still the uh, wind 3025. So still operating under that most recent observation. Back to the timbers. We're kind of done with the first timbers page, but we're floating on the uh, continuation page. Timbers at 1 1000 and 270 here. <clears throat> Order, remember, and on the page I just deleted, but it was like 11,000 to flight level 240. So, yeah, we, we can see that we're definitely somewhere within that very broad range. Uh, speed's drifting up. Let's go ahead and pull it back to about 62. It back down to 270 knots. Uh, let's pull a couple more, a couple more and one out of it. The map's starting to get a little cluttered. We'll just zoom it in one. Oops. Zoom it in one. There we go. Still need to pull a little bit of throttle out. Keep it down to 270. Okay, there we go. Those of you scoring at home, Timbers 11,000 and 270, and then Vance 11 to 15 and 250 on the speed. So again, you'll notice we might not be, actually the, the banana here, the, I, think that, I think the banana is telling us where we'll be at 5,000. So we're not going to be at 5,000 until we're much closer into the airport. So I don't think the banana captures those intermediate uh, step-down constraints. But we trust the FMC. We're right on descent profile, according to that little snowflake symbol. 
and the little bubble there that tells us our target descent rate to get to the next constraint. Uh, remember, we don't have to be at 11,000 at Timbers. Uh, it's 11,000 or above, and then Vance is 11,000 or above, and the 15,000 or below. Uh, coming up on 18,000, we can go ahead and switch back to our local barometer setting. 3025 is what uh, Portland was showing, so we'll spin that up to 3025. does change the altitude calculation slightly, but the FMC seems to still be on top of it, so uh, we're at 260 now, so let's still want to be at 270 passing timbers. <laughs> Uh, at this point, we'll just say we're, we're getting handed over to Portland Approach now. And uh, what was that frequency we put in? 124.35. Okay, good. We guessed correctly. So all we got to do is click once, 124.35. And now uh, that's popped up into the active for COM1. So Portland Approach, Citation 514, Delta Victor's now through 17,006 going to, uh, or descending via the Timbers 2. We've got information from Charlie at Portland. And they will say, uh, Citation 514, Delta Victor, thanks for Charlie. Uh, expect ILS approach, uh, expect ILS runway 28 right approach. All right, so all this time we've been expecting ILS 28 left, and now they've assigned us 28 right. So we've got a few things. First of all, first thing we want to do, all right, and now we're, well, first thing we want to do is we want to start uh, slowing down for that speed restriction advance, which was 250 knots. So I'll pull it down to about 45%, and we'll see, we'll monitor that's, uh, that, uh, that airspeed. All right, let's jump into the FMC real quick and uh, change that arrival. 28 right. We'll hit 28 left, undo that, 28 right, and execute. And let's go back to the legs page and just advance flower, Widmer row age. Okay, those are all still still part of the uh, arrival, and then should be ice axe on the next page. And then uh, now we have to see. And now it has put us back into uh, the beginning of that arrival. So we've got to we've got to do some uh, some magic here to make that uh, that adjustment. So let's go next. Yeah. So OMC um, is the first point on the two eight right. Let's get it in front of us here and get rid of two eight left. Uh, ILS two eight right. Open that up. So after ISAX we should be. Yeah, OMSI and then tow lock. All right, so then let's pick up OMSI and let's go back and put it there after ice axe there. Execute. And again, we're going to be vectored after ice axe, so we're not going to get rid of that discontinuity, but everything's now looking good. We're going from uh, ice axe to OMSI to tow lock and then to the runway. So, uh, so yeah, it reimported that whole star there but you just have to kind of manually adjust it and take that second duplicate star out. And we're good to go now, set up for 28 right. Um, so, 28 right. Again, we've kind of been operating under the delusion that we're gonna you know, be vectored into the, to the south, because we're coming from the south, we'll get the south runway, but we'll notice here that these guys are really good. They know that we're GA, and they know that we're parking right up here at the GA terminal, so they're like, well, we'll bring him in on the right, that'll shorten his taxi for him. So they're nice guys, and uh, they threw us a little bit of curveball with the runway change, but they want us on the right side just to help us out with the taxi. Um, all right, so what else do we need to do to prepare for this arrival? We got the FMC set. Let's go ahead and get the uh, V speeds. Uh, we know the wind is seven knots, so the uh, V approach should be about five knots above the V arrival. Normally you take the sustained wind and cut it in half. Um, but then you you know the, the make a minimum of uh, of five knot differential there. So performance approach. Uh, what is the uh, what is the temperature at Portland? Let's go back to the METAR that we had. Temperature there says it's seven degrees Celsius. So we'll pop that in. You know I need to check and make sure that we're still okay with our speed here. Two. Uh, well we're perfect. And we're now going down to uh, seven thousand at the next constraint. At flower, uh, flower. There's no speed restriction, so we're still good at 250. Yeah, we're still good at 250. Okay. All right, back to the approach briefing. Um, we got the temperature in. We can pretty much go to the next page. Uh, 110 VREF, 116 V approach. Go ahead and send. 
if you had a really gusty uh, day like we did last night, we can go into the rest menu and then we can uh, come down to V approach and we can manually adjust that up to whatever we need it. You know, if it was really gusty, you know, we might be as much as 20 knots above V ref for our V approach. So we can manually change that to a 130, but uh, it's not just an 8 knot, 7 knot wind, 8 knot wind. We'll put it back to where it was at 116. Another thing we want to do on this page is we want to set the uh, minimums. Oops, 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 let's get out of that. Put that back to 116, now we go to the big knob there. Okay, barrow minimums. And barrow minimums on the 28 right is uh, 281, so we'll just go up to the next uh, next highest 10 degree, or 10, 10 foot, so 290. So we'll spin that up to 290 here. Always round up to the next one. You don't want to descend accidentally descend one foot below minimums. So we'll set it up you know, to the next closest one above it. And then we're done with the rest menu. Alright, we're through uh, through 10,000. Get taxi landing lights, logo lights on. Bump, bump, and bump. We'll do the passenger briefing for the arrival. Come on. Here we are. May I have your attention, please? We will be okay, and we can get rid of that page. Okay. Alright, we are coming up on flower now, and I think that's where we need to slow to 210. No, we're not to slow to 210 until Widmer. Okay, continuing our approach briefing then. We got the FMC legs, uh, we got the V speeds imported, we got the minimum set. Uh, we know the forecast winds, so it's going to be a slight left correction, as we said. Uh, forecast ceiling, I th what was the uh, what was the cloud cover? S a few at 4,000, so we should be well, you know, cloud bases should be well above minimum, shouldn't have any problems seeing the airport. It's 250 at 8, yeah, so it's a slight left to right crosswind. Uh, missed approach procedure on the 28 right is, uh, s let's see, straight ahead to 600 and then a climbing right turn 4200 right battleground. Now, I would love to tune battleground on NAV2 and have like this, this raw data um, backup to go direct to battleground VOR, or I would love to have it in the FMC. Uh, this you know this missed approach procedure with that right turn to battleground, but uh, we don't have that yet, so we'll just kind of have to manually manage that uh, navigation to battleground VR if we have to go missed. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind though is it's 4,200 foot uh, missed approach altitude. We'll dial that in after we get uh, on the glide slope, so we'll keep that in mind. But we do at least have the procedure in our mind, so we know we've got to climb straight ahead to 600, then start a right turn, and then we'll still rest out from there if we have to uh, if it comes to that. Uh, if we do land successfully, uh, it is a left-hand turnoff. Um, again, we are—we know that this plane is going to float long, like it's got extra energy in it. So, we'll, you know, we'd hope to make Alpha Four uh, or Alpha Five the first high speed. If we make the second high speed, that's Alpha Six. But either way, we're going to be back on Alpha, headed toward uh, the GA terminal parking here off Alpha Three. So, it's definitely a left-hand turnoff. Uh, of the runway. So I think we're set now. We've got the complete approach briefing done. And uh, so now are we coming up on... Yeah, we're coming up on Wedmer, so we need, we need oh, and we're about 10 knots too, 15 knots too fast anyway. Uh, but we want to go ahead and pull, start pulling that down to 210 knots. Within the terminal area, when you're when you're this close to the airport, I kind of like to get down to about 210 anyway. But uh, on this star, there's a specific restriction saying you have to be at 210. Let's um, advance this right hand. Okay, so we're 1,000 feet away from that 5,000 foot altitude. Let's just uh, pop that up there. Okay, so we know we're about to make that right turn, and we're supposed to maintain a. 103 heading after ice axe until we're starting to be vectored. So we'll get that heading bug set and ready to go. Heading set to 103. 
Coming up on that 5,000 foot altitude. Oh, we're definitely hitting that icing. Let's do that. All right, there's 210. Let's go ahead and let's put some power back in it to maintain that. Then as soon as we get uh, on that right turn to ice axe, <laughs> appropriately named at this point. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're coming up on ice axe, guys. Um, okay, yeah, so we're turning to that uh, that heading out toward ice axe. We know we're going to maintain a 103 when we get there. Let's just go ahead and put it in heading mode at this point. And uh, let's just say, okay, approach is now giving us a step down to 4,000 feet. So we'll go 4,000. And uh, we're going to put it in, um, we're going to put it in vertical speed mode at this point. We'll manually manage the uh, descent to uh, 210, I mean, to, uh, to 4,000. At this point, we're getting vectors and we're getting altitude step downs. We don't really need the uh, VNAV anymore. We can flip this over into NAV mode and uh, start intercepting the ILS. We would want to confirm 111.3 and 283. And uh, that is indeed 111.3 and 283. So we're good. I'm um, see they're going to intercept us. Whoops. I'm um, see they're going to intercept us at. Uh, 2900 so we'll, we'll say that they'll probably just go ahead and put us to uh, trying to get down to 210 trying to get us down to 3000 now altitude yeah I know let's change it okay we're still in vertical speed getting down to 3000 and then they will uh, give us our intercept here yeah, we kind of, kind of, kind of want to be around 210, and then as soon as they give us that intercept, you know, we probably want to cut it down to about 170 and get the first notch of flaps out. Two flap settings will approach and and uh, landing. Pretty, it's pretty much just those two notches. 15 is, is approach flaps and 35 is landing flaps. And I'll call, I'll, I'll verbally call that flaps one and flaps two, just FYI. Uh, so again, we're pulling the power back to get down to 210. Let's go ahead and say that they're giving us this uh, this intercept heading. So we'll spin it around, uh, probably a you know, probably a 330 or thereabouts. And they got us coming down to 3,000. At this point, we want to go ahead and get the speed down to uh, 170. Go ahead and get this into rose mode. You can see the uh, we can pretty much ignore the magenta path now. The magenta path is taking us out to the east, uh, but you can see the ghost uh, ghost localizer indicator there on the rose mode. Okay, so now they're going to bring us in at a little bit of a shallower intercept out of 300. And they'll say, uh, th maintain 3,000 until established, clear for the ILS, 2-8 right approach. Once you hear that, get it uh, rolled out onto that 300 heading. There's 170 knots, by the way. So we'll go ahead and pop it into uh, approach mode now. We'll clear for the approach. Altitude mode is selected with the glide slope armed. That is good. Go ahead and get flaps one out. We'll have to add some power back in. Keep it at 170. We know that the Portland Tower frequency is 18.7. We'll get ready to switch over to that. Into the standby. Oh, it's got us on the... Uh, so the, the green diamond moved over to the left. We can see that the phantom uh, localizer indicator there moved over to the left. And the plane now has us joined in on that localizer. And the good news is we got the runway in sight.
<clears throat> so we should, when we start to get close in, we know that we're going to intercept that glide slope uh, at a distance of 7.7 .7 pretty much, or no, it's 10.7 because we're intercepting at 3,000. So it'll actually be a little it'll be closer to 11 since we're 3,000, not 29. So it'll be slightly before 10.7. So that's when we expect to intercept that glide slope. We're at 12.7 now. We should start to see it come down, and we do in fact see it starting to come down. Missed approach altitude 4,200. Below the cloud layer, looks like we could, uh, well, still, still kind of cold. We'll keep the anti-icing on, but at this point, continuous ignition will be on for arrival anyway. So as soon as it captures glide slope, okay, you can see it's descending. We'll go ahead and get the gear out. It's common to be told to maintain. 170 until a five mile final. So we'll do our best, we'll practice that. Uh, so at this point, we're handed over to the tower contact, uh, Portland Tower on 118.7, so we'll do that. At this point, it's a one switch, 118.7, we can, 121.9 is the ground frequency, we'll pre dial that in. Hopefully, we won't have to go around. Portland Tower, Citation 514 Delta Victor is on a 9 mile final ILS 2A right. 514 Delta Victor, Portland Tower, wind blah 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 at blah blah blah, runway 2A right, clear to land. Clear to land 2A right, 514 Delta Victor. Okay. And we're, 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 a little bit, we're told to maintain 170 until 5 mile final. Let's just say we were. Parking brake. Must have bumped that at some point. Okay. Good that it warned us of that. Okay, so there's 170 for another two and a half miles. Since we are on glide slope, we can set that altitude, that missed approach altitude, 4200. So that's set. I think we can get the anti-icing off now, but we'll maintain the uh, continuous ignition just for the arrival phase regardless. Alright, so there's our six mile final. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and spin it back, get stabilized, go flaps two. The approach was one sixteen. See it there marked on the speed tape. All right, landing checks. Flaps are set and check. Gear is down and green. We do have our landing clearance. Missed approach altitude set. Right turn if we go missed. Oh, we're a couple of knots slow now. Let's get uh, back up to that V approach of 116. And you'll see the ankle of attack indicator looking looking good. Pappies are looking good. Everything says we're looking good. All right. Autopilot. My airplane. Remember, it is going to float long because of the uh, exaggerated ground effect when we get down. So again, don't be too judgy on the landing, guys. A couple knots fast. We can actually... Five. There's 500. We can start pulling it to the V from the V approach to the V ref. So we should be going down to about, I think, 106 is what it was. Slightly low. Minimums. Minimums. Continuing. I 
Let's get this center line dialed in. Okay, drop the power. Here comes that crazy floaty ground effect. Kind of hold it off. There we are. 95 feet per minute on the uh, touchdown. A little bit of right rudder to hold it in. Spoilers out. Can we make the next high speed turn off? Yeah, those wheel going to come down. Okay. Can we make this one? Yeah, I think we can. Okay, flaps and spoilers can go stowed. I think that's the second high speed, so I think we're off at alpha 6. I didn't quite catch it on the side, but I think that was the second high speed turn off. So I think we're off at alpha 6. Get the uh, landing lights, strobes, and pr uh, pulses off. And let's make sure we're across the uh, hold line. Let's check in with uh, ground control. 21.9. So there we go. Clip that one. Nine. Okay, Portland Ground, Citation 514, Delta Victor, Alpha 6 Alpha, going to GA ramp. So, okay, yeah, taxi GA ramp via Alpha Alpha 3. Okay, 514, Delta Victor, Alpha Alpha 3, the GA ramp. Alright, taxi in procedure as follows. Flaps and spoilers are stowed. Landing lights off, strobe lights off, pulse lights off. Uh, ignition, uh, you know, continuous ignition can be turned off. Uh, the tow in static and any other anti-icing you still have on can be turned off. Weather radar can be turned off. I can remember which button it is. There it is. All right. Yeah, so we floated it way long down the runway, like I said. But uh, 95 feet per minute on the touchdown, not too bad. And, uh, yeah, we got the bounce. So, yeah, it, like I said, it's going to act, even though you put it right on the numbers for V-Approach and V-Ref, it's going to act like it's got all kinds of crazy extra energy on the uh, on the touchdown, on the short approach, or the short final on touchdown. Uh, so that's just uh, exaggerated ground effect that causes that. And uh, that is a probably probably an Asobo aerodynamic modeling issue to fix. I don't know that that is necessarily the working tidal groups issue to fix, but uh, just something we have to deal with for now. If you want to cheat, if you're on a shorter runway, we had 10,000 feet of runway there. If you want to cheat, you can probably throw the spoilers out a little bit on short final, but you know, obviously in reality you'd never deploy the spoilers before the wheels are, are down. On a, on an approach like that. And we want to turn in here. Is this Alpha 3? Where are we? That's Whiskey. Okay, we got to go one more. You'd think I'd remember this from last night. Let's see if I can get. So last night we were able to do this successfully. Today we'll see if we can uh, see if we can do it again. If we get into an actual bona fide parking spot, and I mean a plane parking spot, not a car parking spot, get into an actual actual bona fide plane parking spot. Did I pass it? Must have passed it. All right, Portland ground, uh, citation 504. Victor. We missed our turn off onto the GA ramp. Can we get a 180 here? I'd be like, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's yelling at me because uh, it thinks I'm about to go into takeoff again. Uh, so last night we were able to get into a bona fide parking spot that does have ground power available. So we'll see if we can do that again today. Just to demonstrate that.
Oh yeah, there we go. There's our ground crew waiting for us. Very good, right up there next to that little twin turbo there. So let's see how they're waving us. Which way they want us facing. Alright, so let's go. Let's go into the right. Or no, wait a minute. Oh yeah, he's facing that way. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, we're not taking off. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, I see you, buddy. I see you. All right, turn the taxi lights off at this point so we don't blind the guy. Oh, yeah, I missed overshot this just a touch. Now we can hit the parking brake. Not sure how I accidentally got that engaged earlier, but that's uh, good to go there. Parking brake on. Taxi light is already off. We can get the uh, run stop buttons back into stop and just guard those back up. There we go. Get the generators off. Two and one. Get the beacon light off. The uh, seatbelt light can come off. And passenger safety light can come off as well. Uh, now we can uh, we can silence those alarms. Warning, okay. Yeah, yeah, we know. Uh, let's go back to the index page, see if we can reconnect ground power now. Index, next, mod set. Oh, ground power is available. Nice, we can put that on. There we go. So that, that now demonstrates how to do that. Um, what else? We'll set the squawk back to uh, 1200, so we'll go back to the tune page. And uh, just put a uh, right generic IFR canceled. And again, we'll go back into standby, but again, you would have to pull V-Pilot. Uh, if you're on the VATSIM network, you have to pull V-Pilot back over and change it from uh, from mode C to standby on the V-Pilot as well. The squawk code does send up through V-Pilot and VATSIM. Uh, the, the, the mode does not. So the mode you have to set twice, once here and once in the pilot client. The squawk you only have to set the one time, and that will uh, that will propagate as it should. Um, my planning spreadsheet says we should be here at... Uh, 1703 Zulu uh, on the ground and 1708 Zulu on the blocks. As of the time I am speaking, it is actually 1715. So we're seven minutes after the planned time, so that's not too bad. We uh, we're, Did we take off pretty close to the planned time? Because I did change it to, uh, to whatever it was when we were getting ready to pull up to the runway. And our planned fuel is uh, 2338, according to my little calculations. And uh, I'll show you. Uh, just uh, so this is what I'm looking at. Estimated touchdown time, estimated block time. Again, this is my own spreadsheet. I do have a tutorial on the YouTube page that shows where I come up with these numbers. And uh, we're looking to have 23.38 total fuel remaining, so that should be just less than 1,200 per tank. And let's see how we did. Just less than 1,200 per tank. Wow. Awesome. So uh, those numbers are pretty good. Again, I'm using 450 knots cruise true airspeed and 1350 gallon or 1350 pounds per hour um, as far as my numbers when you get to that spreadsheet uh, tutorial if you if you look that up um, you'll need to have those two numbers 450 knots true airspeed and 1350 is what I'm using now uh, as far as the hourly uh, consumption in pounds and again as you just saw those numbers are looking pretty good so all right let's get the rest of the shutdown done we can go ahead and get the climate control the climate control kicked off last night as well, and I thought I had forgotten to turn it on. Um, obviously, it kicks off manually at some point. I don't know when that does. 
but I uh, did that last night as well. I thought I'd forgotten it, but I know today that I did not. I have video evidence of it. But, uh, okay. But anyway, you would kick that off. Maybe it kicked off when you shut the plane off. I don't know. I have to research that. But anyway, climate control off. I guess I can take that out of the checklist, can't I? <laughs> So that's now fixed. Save that. Okay. Uh, ground power now can be disconnected since we're going to just put it on the ramp and park it. So let's go back to index and uh, next and mod set and disconnect ground power. We're going to get some additional uh, master caution warnings there. We can shut off. Okay. Yep. Uh, avionics at this point can go ahead and be shut off. And that's this switch over here. Right there, we'll get the rest of the lights off, which is the nav lights and the logo lights. And we can shut the battery off, and I think we are golden, guys. I think that is it. All right, well, very good. So uh, that went a little bit more smoothly than last night. Um, and I, I, A, I forgot, some, I forgot fewer things. <laughs> I don't know that I forgot anything major today. Um, but also, um, you know, we did model what, to ha what would happen if you got that last-minute runway switch, but it wasn't quite as last-minute as the one we got last night, where I got a little bit too probably aggressive in saying that I could accept that last-minute runway change, where I should have given myself a little bit more time to uh, to get that set up and rebriefed. Um, but hopefully you guys got a real good uh, demonstration. The vertical navigation is brilliant. It works so well in this plane, and that is such a, such a big accomplishment. Um, but even the route adjustments on the fly that you can make in this plane uh, makes it one of the more functional, if not the most functional, um, you know, jet aircraft in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 right now. So uh, kudos to the working title team for putting all that together and, and doing such a good job with it. It's it's such a joy to fly. A lot of fun. It's a beautiful little plane, and I love the little 80s vibe of the uh, of the of the you know the Citation jets that they have. So it fits fits right in with the theme of the channel, even though it's not slant alpha navigation, which is radio navigation only. Uh, but it still just happens to fit right in with, with the theme of the channel to have that kind of vintage vibe to it. So, uh, Awesome. All right, well, I uh, hope that you guys enjoyed. Uh, do have, if you have any questions, you can hit me up in the comments. And uh, you can also find us on the Slant Alpha social media pages, which are listed at the bottom of your screen there, the Facebook page, Twitter page, and the uh, Discord channel. Hope that you'll catch us live on Twitch TV, Slant Alpha Adventures on Twitch. Um, and we are normally, as of the time of this tutorial, our normal schedule is Monday and Friday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And we also pop in and do uh, air traffic control on the VATSIM network from time to time as well. We mostly do uh, aircraft with radio VOR, way, VOR airway navigation. Uh, that's what slant alpha means. Uh, by the way, there's a tutorial on the YouTube channel here, uh, playlist tutorials, that, uh, that explains what all those navigation suffixes mean too. So if you don't know what I mean by slant alpha, slant lima, slant golf, you can, uh, you can check that tutorial out as well. It gives you a pretty good explanation, about a seven and a half minute explanation on all that stuff. So um, anyway, that I, I, like I said, I hope you enjoyed. I hope that you'll stop back and see us on Twitch or back over here on YouTube. Either way, uh, be healthy and safe in your own travels and your own adventures, and we will talk to you soon.